I love arrow functions. The syntax is great, it makes working with one-liners incredibly easy, and they give you access to this keyword in ways that normal functions don't. But I almost never use arrow functions except for in two specific scenarios. Other than that, I always prefer to use normal functions. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the two scenarios that I use arrow functions for, as well as why I use normal functions for everything else. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today I'm talking about why I don't generally use arrow functions except in specific scenarios. Now, if I were to ask you really quickly, what does this code right here do? It'd be impossible for you to tell me, and that's because all of the important code is down here at the very bottom of my file off the screen, you couldn't even see it. And this is one of my biggest problems with arrow functions is they work just like normal variables, which means they don't exhibit any hoisting behavior, which means they must be defined before the actual code that uses them. That means all of the important code right here must be defined after all of these helper functions, which honestly don't really matter. When I'm reading the code, the code that I care about is right here, the actual core code for the file. I don't care about all these helper functions because all they are is helper functions. I can just read the name of the function and that's all I really care about. So when I use normal functions, I can actually take this code and move it below my important code just like this. But if I use arrow functions like I am here and I save, you can see we're getting errors because the references are not available because we're using const to define these. So if I convert all these to functions, there we go. You can see that now my code is working just fine and all of the important code is at the very top, which is great because it makes it easier to read. I can read the important code and then if I wanna dive into a helper function, well, I can just go find that helper function. Now this one single fact right here is the main reason why I like using normal functions over arrow functions is because they can be hoisted. Also, I personally find that the syntax for writing out functions that have names such as double number or have numbers like this is a little bit more easy to read when it's a function syntax as opposed to having a const here and then we have, you know, an equal sign and then we have the arrow here. I find that this syntax is a little bit more confusing. It's not entirely apparent that this is a function. While when I have the function keyword at the beginning, it's much more obvious to me this is a function. So that nicer syntax combined with the fact that I can have hoisting, which means I can define my functions at the bottom of my file, is the main reason I really like using normal functions. But you will notice I actually use arrow functions in this code. And the main place that I use arrow functions is whenever I need an anonymous function, for example, when I'm dealing with callbacks. Every time I write a callback, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to be using arrow functions because the syntax is so much nicer than writing out a full function for this. And I just like how it looks and like how it works, especially with these one-liners that automatically return for me. So this is one place that I always use arrow functions whenever I need to pass a function to another function. And the other time I use arrow functions is whenever I need to deal with a particular this syntax. So the this object will change depending on if you're using functions or arrow functions for particular things. For example, if I just remove all of this code and I just say document.addEventListener, I'm gonna do two different ways. One way, I'm going to be using a normal function. This will just be a simple anonymous function. I'm so used to doing arrow functions. I wrote this as an arrow function. And we can come in here, we can console.log this, and we'll just console.log e.target. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. Let's make sure this is a click event listener so that it actually does something. I'm gonna do the same exact thing down here, but this time I'm going to be using an arrow function. I'm gonna log out the exact same things. And I'll make sure that this one says arrow, and this one up here is going to say function. There we go. So now if I just give this a quick save, I'm just gonna bring over this document. I'm going to click on it. And now you can see we get two interesting things being printed out. This first one is for our function. And you'll notice the actual, this property right here, this first one is exactly the same as the property for e.target. While our arrow function, this property points to the actual window. And then the e.target is exactly the same as our function version. So the, this keyword changes depending on if you're using a normal function or an arrow function for specific things. In our case, whatever you click on is going to be the this object. So e.target and this should be exactly the same if you're using a normal function. While if you're using an arrow function, the this keyword defaults to whatever the this keyword is in the outer context. So in our case, it just defaults to the window because that's what this is outside of our event listener. Now, I personally much prefer to have this type of syntax with our arrow function because the way that this works is much easier to understand for me. And a lot of times I need to access the outer this, for example, the window inside of my event listener. So having something like an arrow function makes doing that much easier. Some people actually advocate to always use normal functions instead of arrow functions for event listeners because then this points to the target. 
but you can just use e.target to get the exact same thing. So that is something I really don't see being relevant because there's a bunch of different target information such as the current, related, or actual target you can get that give you all the same information that this is going to give you. Now that covers pretty much everything about this in relation to arrow functions, but another way that you need to consider this is with normal functions as well. So let me just paste down some simple code here that has a person, and this person has a first name, Kyle, last name, Cook, and a function for printing the name, which is using an arrow function that just gets the current first name and last name and prints them out. But when I save this, you'll notice it prints out undefined for both of them. And that is because when using an arrow function, like I mentioned before, the this keyword is corresponding to whatever is outside of the thing we're inside of. So this, in our case, is the window, so there is no first name or last name property defined. That's why I need to use a normal function here instead. So if I change this to be a normal function, you can now see this is going to work just fine because this refers to my current person object. And you can even write this code like this. Instead, it's a little bit more succinct, a little bit easier to read, and it gives you the same result. Now, this is something that you probably won't run into that often because at least me personally, I don't do much object-oriented programming, which is where a lot of this keyword right here for this comes in and writing code like this comes in. But if this is something you do a lot, then you're gonna need to make sure you use normal functions because arrow functions will not work. Really though, for me, the main reason I like using normal functions is for code like this, where I can put all my helper functions at the bottom of my file and all of my important code at the top. This is 99.9% .9 of the reason I always use functions for everything, and it just makes writing your code so much easier. But when you have those anonymous functions like you're passing a callback here, arrow functions, in my opinion, are the way to go. Now, if you enjoyed this, you're gonna love some of my other JavaScript hot takes, like why I don't really use else very much and why I don't use semicolons at all. Both those videos are gonna be linked right over here. Now, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.